Hello and welcome to Sports Mole's Football Shorts. I'm Barney Corkill. I'm here with our football editor, Matt Law, and we're here to discuss Game Week 12 of the Premier League season. Game Week 11 was better than Game Week 10 in our predictions, Matt, but um, you, you fared better than me. Two exact scorelines, right, to take a six-point lead overall in our uh, in our competition. Yeah, just speaking, weren't we? A good, uh, good week from both of us, to be fair, but a couple from me spot on. As we say, in five points is... Uh... Is a good good one to have, and it's so good to get that twice. Is uh, good, and uh, yeah, normal service. And hopefully, we uh, can go again this week. Yep, and this week starts on Friday night with Leeds versus West Ham. We've mentioned a few times there's quite a few fixtures which just look like they'll be decent games, and with both teams who are capable of playing some good football, and West Ham in particular had have been really impressive so far this season. Obviously, lost to Manchester United last time out, um, but this this is all the makings of another good game, doesn't it? Yeah, it looks a good one, doesn't it? Certainly on paper. I think it's the first Premier League game between the two sides since 2003. It's crazy, really. You think about I was looking through the team sheets for that game, you know, West Ham and the likes of Carrick, you know, Joe Cole, De Canio, mm. Leeds, you know, Milner, uh, Backer, Matteo, players like that. And it was, you know, it's, you see, think it's so long ago, but I mean, it is so long ago. I mean, like 20 years ago since they've met in the Premier League. And so it is great to have Leeds back at this level. And yeah, it looks a good game, obviously. Leeds, I think, obviously, have lost Rod- Robin Koch, haven't they, to an injury? And him, that's yeah. a big blow for them. Obviously, they've never they've got Diego Lorente, who have never managed really to get him fit since they signed him. So they're missing some key players. Obviously, the one that stands out for West Ham is Antonio. And I think he's touch and go again, to be honest. Obviously, he missed out against United. And I do think if he was playing against United, it, it would have been a lot tougher for, for Manchester United in that game. West Ham were good in the first half, should have, should have probably gone in more than 1 0, shouldn't they? But United, to mm-hmm. be fair, second half. Were really good, so I was a little bit disappointed. Not disappointed from United's point of view because I wanted them to win. But West Ham, if I was a West Ham fan, the second half of that game would have been a little bit disappointed by the performance. Hallow wasn't great, which is why I think Antonio, if he's playing or not, is it's massive, isn't it, for West Ham? Leeds, on the other hand, they've just been a story of their season, really, haven't they? We use the word all the time inconsistent. Obviously, lost beat Everton, then lost at Chelsea. But I think a lot of teams are going to lose at Chelsea this season. It wasn't, mm. you know, a terrible result. and and you know Leeds sitting, I mean Leeds are sitting fourteenth for the table in this, but if they win this, they go level on points of West Ham. So it's one of those where you know it's going to swing either way. Um, and yeah, it's an interesting one. I sort of went back and forth on this one, but I've just settled on a one-one draw in the end. I think if West Ham definitely had Antonio, I might be siding with them. But Leeds played some really good stuff this season, so uh, yeah, draw here one-one. Yeah, I've gone exactly the same, simply because I couldn't really pick a winner. I think nat- first thought for me was naturally to go. I think Leeds might win this one because. For all, I mean, you look, you look at their actual form, they've only won one of the last five, which isn't great. And as you say, 14th in the table. But then, as you say, one win brings them level on points with West Ham. It's still very congested there. And you look a bit further into their rec- their more recent form. Obviously, the defeats to Leicester and uh, Crystal Palace were really disappointing. Back-to-back 4-1 defeats in November. But then the draw against Arsenal, which they should have won. The win against Everton, which is good. Um, and the loss at Chelsea. And as you say, plenty of teams are going to lose at Chelsea this season. So you can't look too much into that one. Um, so perhaps their form's a little bit better than that one win in uh, five games headline suggests. Uh, but having said that, West Ham have been really impressive as well, especially against the teams who who like to play good expansive football and who they can hit on the break, which you know Leeds would probably fall into that category. Um, obviously wanting to bounce back from that disappointing result against Manchester United last time out, but they, they all feel aggrieved by that. Uh, the opening goal, Moyes obviously thought was out of play. Um, and they'll take heart from their, their first half goal, uh, their first half performance sorry in that one so yeah I think it's an interesting one I could see either team winning to be honest but I, yeah like you I think I've sat on the fence and gone for one all draw in this one um, 12.30pm on Saturday there's a Midlands derby between Wolves and Aston Villa how do you see that one going? Yes it's a really interesting on that one I think Wolves obviously I didn't expect them to get hit by four by Liverpool to be honest mm. it was another I mean another one of the Leicester games similar wasn't it? we both, both sort of fancied something the away side might have got something from that game but Liverpool to be fair I think it's disappointing from Wolves' point of view, as good as I think Liverpool were, to go and lose 4-0 at Anfield with the problems that Liverpool have had is a little bit, especially after beating Arsenal, yeah, you want to take another step forward. And I've said it a few times this season, Wolves, I, they do confuse me when I watch them because they're just not quite sure what you're going to get, really. You can say that about a lot of teams, but I think the talent they've got in their team, they need to show a little bit more consistency. I mean, they're sitting 10th in the table at the moment. Well, like we've mentioned, it's not... I still don't think the table's massive to talk about at this stage because it's so... You know, United were really far down a few weeks ago. Now they're up in sixth. Arsenal were 15th. But if they win a couple, they're going to fly up the table. So it's mm-hmm. difficult to look at the table at this stage. Villa, on the other hand, I mean, they're the mark of inconsistency, aren't they? They've lost their last two against West Ham and Brighton, obviously, after beating Arsenal. And you're thinking, can they take steps forward? You know, can they really go on a run now? And they just lose again and they lose again. And obviously, Ross Barkley, I think, is going to be 
going to be out. And it, it's just they're a strange team, aren't they, Villa? It's, they're, they're a weird one to watch. It wouldn't be too far surprising if they went and won this game. But I don't think they will. I just think Wolves will have a little bit too much probably going forward. Um, should be an open game. Uh, some, some goals I've predicted. But yeah, I've just gone Wolves 2-1. Yeah, I've gone exactly the same again. For the same reasons, really. I think you just look at Aston Villa's form and we know the quality they've got because they've shown it this season. Obviously, we're going to say it many times this season, the standout one is that win over Liverpool, but also beating Leicester. Following that win up with Leicester, uh, against Liverpool with the victory over Leicester was really big for them. But since then, yeah, it's four defeats in five Premier League games for them, which has obviously seen them sink down to 12, um, which after a really bright start to the season will be disappointing. I think if you gave Dean Smith this position mm. um, after what they've had nine games of the season, I think they would have taken it for sure. Um but obviously not in action last weekend because the game against Newcastle got called off. So they should be well rested more so than most of the other teams. But obviously that means they've got a, a, an even more packed uh, fixture schedule coming up. So they'll, they'll really want to get back to winning ways. But but like you, I can't really see it happening here. I've gone for 2-1 as well. I think Wolves, you mentioned, they are. it's difficult to know what to expect from them really because they can beat Arsenal one week and then you know get comfortably beaten by Liverpool the next week. They've got Chelsea a few days after this Aston Villa game, which is obviously um, an even more difficult match on paper. So they'll be really keen to get back to winning ways heading into that one. Uh, but yeah, like you, I can't really see it happening. It's a difficult festive period for them as well. They've got Tottenham and Manchester United as well before the end of the year still. So um, they need to pick up points in these types of matches and then uh, I can see them doing that. So yeah, I've gone for 2-1 to Wolves like you have. Um, 3 p.m. on Saturday is Newcastle versus West Brom. Newcastle, obviously, the other team in that Villa game that got um, postponed, um, obviously hit by coronavirus issues um, recently. West Brom hit for five by Crystal Palace. That was a hugely disappointing result. I think we both predicted goalless draws in that game, which we got <laughs> terribly wrong. But um, after you know beating Sheffield United to pick up um, their first win of the season, that's such a disappointing result to, to lose 5-1 at home to Crystal Palace, isn't it? Yeah, it, was, it wasn't great at all, was it, to be honest? And this is obviously, it's a weird one, isn't it? Because you look at it two ways, with Newcastle having a bit of a break. You know, a lot of managers have spoke about the crowded lists, but I mean, Newcastle, they're not, it's not like they're in European action this season. So they've not, mm. obviously haven't played since that win at Palace. And I thought they were really good in their win at Palace um, end of November, wasn't it? Now we're talking about December the 11th now, going into a period where they've had a bit of time off. Obviously, it's not, it's not ideal because of circumstances surrounding their time off, you know, a lot of uncertainty and they've still got a lot of doubts for this game. I don't think there's, mm. you know, players St. Maximum might be out. I think he's 50-50, you know, Fraser, Lasqueles. There's a lot of players that have still got doubts for this game. So, it could be, I mean, it could be, they could have a lot of good play, their best players back or they could be missing a few. West Brom, on the other hand, I mean, I, I praised them, didn't I, last week? So, they've showed a few signs recently that they could potentially stay in the league. You know, I mean, tightened up at the back. Obviously, only lost 1-0 against United and Tottenham and then beat Sheffield United. But to lose 5-1 at home to Palace, obviously Palace, I thought, were quite good. Obviously, Zaha come back, made a huge difference. But to lose 5-1 at home is it's just not great, is it, this stage of the season? Obviously, their position in the table, sitting in 19th, you know, six points. They're not massively cut. They're not cut adrift at all. They're not massively cut adrift. They're not cut adrift at all. But, you know, coming up against the Newcastle side who have, you know, been OK this season. Four wins, two draws, two defeats. Um, four defeats, sorry, have, have been quite good. Um, yeah, I've just got Newcastle here. West Brom on the road, I'm not sure they're going to get many, many points, to be honest. And Newcastle had a little bit of a break. So, uh, yeah, 2 0 Newcastle. Yeah, I've got Newcastle 1 0. I think um, you mentioned there, we both went for 0 0 in that uh, Palace game because West Brom had looked so much better defensively. But then to ship five goals, and obviously you mentioned Zaha coming back in, we know the stats with and without him. Um, in the Palace team, their winning record, but still to concede five goals at home to a, a team who hadn't scored in the previous two, um, were among the lowest scorers last season, don't exactly have a fantastic um, attacking record this season before um, those five goals they scored, is really disappointing. And obviously there's a lot of uh, speculation that Slavin Bilic, if he loses this match, you know, might be sacked. So it's a, it's a huge game for West Brom. Um, when you consider they're, a, they're one point off safety, I think that's maybe pulling the trigger a little bit early. But as you say, there's there's loads of uh, worrying signs. I think it's four defeats in their last five um, heading into this one. So, yeah, they need to start picking up points. But like you, I think Newcastle should just have enough. I think with them, obviously they're not a full strength, but with them having Wilson back from injury now, um, I think that's key for them because without him, it was difficult to see where the goals were were going to come from for them to uh, win quite a few games. But I think Wilson's always got the goals in him um, to nick the odd win. And that's exactly what I can see happening here. So, yeah, I've gone for 1-0 Newcastle. Uh, the big game of the weekend is the Manchester derby, Manchester United versus Man City. Um, 
it's, it's fascinating going into this game because I think the perception right now is Man City's season is going a little bit better because they, they've started to hit their stride, five clean sheets in a row, five games unbeaten across all competitions and started to climb the table. Manchester United obviously coming into it off the back of that Champions League exit in midweek, which is a, a huge blow for them. Um, but in the Premier League, four wins in a row. Um, and obviously they've fared much, much better away from home than they have at Old Trafford so far this season. But they do sit one place and one point above Man City in the Premier League table, don't they? So it's a fascinating contest. Um, I think the perceptions are a bit different from the actual league table, how they look now. And both teams, you know, well, victory here keeps them right in touch with the, the top of the pack, doesn't it? So how do you see this one going? Yeah, I mean, like you say, really, it's it's almost... I mean, the strange thing is, from speaking from a United point of view, a fan's point of view, if this was at the Etihad, I'd probably be a little bit more confident. And that says a mm. whole lot about United's away form and and City's... Uh, and their home form, sorry, which has been just been so poor this season. I mean, only beat West Brom um, in the Premier League at the game last uh, Old Trafford. And obviously, the Champions League game was... I mean, they just threw it away, didn't they, in, in the first half of that game to concede couple of really poor goals and there was a fight mm. back in the second half as you always expected there to be but not 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 anywhere near good enough and obviously going out that competition makes this a huge huge game obviously Fred all looks like come back into the side and you know he's a big big player for United he gets some criticism um probably last season was a little bit unfair but he's been one of United's best players this season so we'll come back in obviously there's still doubts over Cavani and Martial I think it's a press conference this afternoon where Solskjaer will clear that up but you fancy Cavani mm. might be back Martial's maybe a little bit Longer, but um, it's a huge game. You know, listen, City, good Champions League win. Obviously, their injury situation is a lot better now. I think Gundogan picked up a little bit of a knock in that game. Obviously, uh, same with Garcia. But apart from that, mm. um, Guardiola's already said, isn't he, that Aguero won't start. Whether that's mind games or whether he won't actually start. Obviously, he came up for gold in the, in the Champions League. And if they can get him back to any sort of form, then that makes City a whole lot better. But, you know, Manchester United's recent form against City is pretty good. You know, when I mean, you did the preview, didn't you, yesterday for it, obviously. And yeah. it's, it's a really, it's a decent, recent record. Obviously, they've lost some poor games against them. But, you know, I've just, I think United are going to have to suffer a lot in this game. They're going to have not a lot of the ball. I think they're going to have to be tight defensively. They're going to have to rely on goalkeeper, whether that is De Gea or Henderson. You fancy it will be De Gea again to have a really good game. If all those things happen and they can, you know, nick a goal in the final four, I'm actually back them to get a point here. I mean, Back them to lose at home to City. I mean, it wouldn't surprise me, but I just think, you know, if they if they can have some luck and some slice of luck and they can keep the ball and they can play, you know, some good stuff and, and nick a goal, like I say, I, I'm going to go 1-1 here. And I think that'd be a really good result, you know, considering the circumstances surrounding the game. Would be, especially considering their home form at the moment. I think the big question mark for me in this one, because looking at recent form and, uh, as I mentioned earlier, Manchester United's recent form in the Premier League is actually pretty good, but obviously their home form has been so poor this season. Man City's away form hasn't been excellent by any means, but they they, they do really seem to be hitting their stride now. Obviously, back-to-back wins over Burnley and Fulham by 7-0 aggregate scoreline. Obviously, those two both came at the Etihad, so they do still need to prove themselves away from home. Um, but the only thing, the only question mark hanging over my head in this is, you know, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's job is under threat and how many times has he done this before? He pulls a big result out of the bag when he needs it most. Um, you could argue that was maybe in midweek when he needed it most, but that, that didn't happen, which obviously powered the pressure back on him. Uh, but his record against Man City and against Pep Guardiola is really good. I think he's got the best record against uh, best win rate against Guardiola of any manager to have faced him more than four times, which when you consider the um, again, the perception of the, the quality between Solskjaer and Pep Guardiola as managers um, is quite surprising. But yeah, I, that that raises a question mark for me. And, you know, United are capable of getting these wins. But I think the way things are going at the moment, Man City now back to full fitness and really hitting their stride in terms of form in the Premier League, finally got those back-to-back wins and starting to show the sort of consistency they've lacked so far this season. Yeah, I'm going for a Man City win here. I've gone for 2-1 and United's home form is really the clincher in that decision for me. Um, OK, on uh, 8pm on Saturday, we've got Everton versus Chelsea. Uh, Chelsea, we've mentioned already, flying high um, in third place at the moment, two points off the top of the table. Everton have really stuttered after their bright start to the season. It's only one win in their last seven games. Um, how do you see this one going? Yeah, I mean, uh, you mentioned Everton were flying, weren't they, early stages of the season? There was a lot of talk of maybe they could, you know, change for the top four. I, st- I thought that was a little bit premature at the time. And obviously, mm-hmm. they're looking like a side that... I mean, do I think they can finish... Could they be a top seven side this season, you know, push a little bit towards the Europa League? I think they've got the ability, but I still think don't think Ancelotti trusts his team defensively. And, you know, if you look at their games this season, you analyse 
periods of games and periods of you know results. Uh, I think he's right to, to to fear that. Obviously, they've got so much ability going forward. Calvert Lewin, Richarlison, you know Rodriguez, players that would you know certainly get games for for the best the best sides in the league. And I think they've got a lot going for them. But I still I think this is a really interesting game, isn't it? Because they played Manchester United, didn't they, uh, at home not so long ago and slightly mm. disappointed in, in that game. And I still think this is another real sort of test of where where they can be. Obviously, Ancelotti knows, knows Chelsea ever so well from his time being there. And it's another good test for Chelsea, isn't it, really? Their title credentials, like you say, sitting third at the moment. I think you, if you'd have offered that to Lampard at this stage, especially after some dodgy results early on, sitting, sitting two points off the top. You know, we mentioned mm-hmm. it, haven't we? We don't think, I don't think either of us think that there's going to be a clear runaway winner this season, you know, Liverpool. Liverpool will obviously be up there. Whether Tottenham can can maintain that is another thing entirely. But yes, it's a really interesting one. You know, Saturday night game obviously is going to be Chelsea coming in off back of the Champions League. Obviously, only drew with Krasnodar, but but it wasn't a you know an important game in the sense of they were already through. You know, secured first spot in the group, and obviously there was a lot of changes in that game. But Everton, I know Ancelotti has spoke recently about resting Calvert Lewin over this Christmas period. Um, I don't think we're resting for this game because uh, he's a real want to beat his former club, no doubt about that. But almost went Chelsea here. But Everton, you know, I do quite like them. If they can find a little bit of consistency in their performances throughout games, I do think they're a good side. So, uh, yeah, maybe I've gone a little bit ambitious here. But I've actually gone 2-2. Well, yeah, I think Chelsea, um, for me, could end up quite comfortable winners here. I've gone for 2-0 to Chelsea. I think um, you look at Everton's last three games and although they picked up the win against Fulham that wasn't an entirely convincing performance then a disappointing defeat at home to Leeds um, and then the draw at Burnley who we we know have really struggled this season I think that draw against Burnley would have been extra disappointing because if you look at their matches coming up in the build-up to Christmas they've got Chelsea, Leicester, Arsenal, Manchester United so it's a really difficult run for them um, you mentioned him resting Calvert-Lewin the question is where, where's he going to rest him because those are all big games that they're they need their best players out really to win. Um, but yeah, I think Leicester, they've, they've, uh, sorry, Everton have just lost their way a little bit. One, one win in the last seven games. Chelsea, on the other hand, have won four of the last five in the Premier League. I think they're unbeaten in 14 now across all competitions. They're really showing good signs of consistency. Only lost once in the Premier League all season. Won six of their 11 games. Um, they are showing signs of consistency, which I can see them carrying on here. Whether they carry that on for the rest of the season remains to be seen. Every passing week they seem to be you know giving their title credentials more of a boost um, and they've certainly got the ability if they can keep everyone fit and they've got depth to cover injuries to be honest um, they've got the quality to really be pushing towards the, the the top of the table and I can see them carrying on that charge here I can uh, I've picked a 2-0 Chelsea win in this one um, Sunday's opening kickoff is Southampton versus Sheffield United Sheffield United season just goes from worse to worse doesn't it it's uh, so one point from 11 games the worst uh, start in Premier League history, which is a stat I seem to be um, rolling out every single week, but it, it's you know it just keeps on getting worse for them. It's now what is it six Premier League defeats in a row, stretching back to last season, a, a really really poor um, and long uh, winless run. Um, and we've we said towards the early stages of the season that it was we didn't really want to necessarily condemn them to second season syndrome. We expected them to have things a lot tougher this season than did the last season, but we still expect them to stay up, but it's getting increasingly difficult to see that happening. They're, what, six points from safety already now, which is by no means an unassailable gap, but when you consider they've only got that one point from 11 games so far this season, it's, it's, it's looking more and more difficult for them to to stay up. And you can trust that with Southampton's form, fifth at the table after 11 games, four points off the top of the table. They've had a superb season so far. Obviously, that, um, that defeat to Manchester United where they let that lead slip uh, recently is disappointing but that is really their only blip recently you have to go back to uh, September against Tottenham for their last win before that uh, so they're in really good form and the win over Brighton um, who we know Brighton have got the ability to take points off most teams they took points off Liverpool in their game before that so um, that's a really good victory for Southampton um, considering Southampton are at home as well what they've in recent times they've been better away from home than they have at home but this season their home form has improved compared to last season and considering Sheffield United it's just impossible to back them at the moment when they're losing game after game Sheffield United aren't they're never getting beaten by a lot but I can see Southampton easing to victory here I've gone for 2-0 yeah it's the same I've gone I've gone 2-0 in this game Southampton I just think you know you talk about you know it's not that far six points behind but you know like you mentioned the, the fact that they've not won a game yet and suddenly you know you're mm. in the middle of December. I mean, their next game after this one's against Manchester United. They play a tough game at Brighton and they play Everton on Boxing Day. I mean, they're not easy games, are they? It's not like they can... 
I mean, with respect, you know, if, if you're playing Fulham at home, maybe that's the sort of game they want. But, mm. you know, that's going to ha- happen once a season. They're, they're going to need to start picking up points in the bigger games. And, you know, if they can do that, if they can get a good result here, obviously it could be a springboard. But, you know, Southampton, on the other hand, obviously having Danny Ings back as well. I think when he picked up that injury, there was a fear, wasn't there, that it was going to be a long-term one. I mm. think that would have been a really, really big blow for Southampton. But to get him back, and I think you mentioned it before, it is almost like he scores every game, doesn't he? He's, he's just an incredible player, really. And, and the way he finds a back of the net consistently, you'd have to put Southampton maybe top seven, top eight challenges, you know, if they could claim a Europa League spot, you know, maybe have a good run in the, in the, in the FA Cup or something, you know, you just feel like, I mean, I do, I do really like them. Even when they were struggling, you know, under Hassan Hurtle, you always felt that there was a, you could see like an identity, couldn't you? It's not like, it's like under Manchester United, you can't really see a massive identity under what they're trying to do, but you could see that with Southampton, you know, you know what they're trying mm. to do, you know, they're a high pressing team and sometimes they run out of energy and can't maintain that, but, that you know they make it very very difficult for a lot of teams. So yeah, I've gone same as you here too, Neil. I just think Sheffield United. I mean, there's talk about. I see. A, I saw a report that they were looking at. They want to buy a defender in January or at least loan one because obviously Jack O'Connell's been out. And but they, they're defensive. I mean, they're not like you say. They don't lose by a lot. I still think they they need to worry more about down the other end of the field. But you know they mm. spent a lot of money on Brewster and. It hasn't quite worked out yet and it's difficult to then throw another 20, 25 million at a striker in January. Uh, so it'll be very interesting to see what they do there. But yeah, Southampton near 2 0. Yeah, only five goals this season for Sheffield United. So that is really an area they need to improve. Um, also on Sunday is a London derby between Crystal Palace and Tottenham. We've mentioned that Crystal Palace big win over West Brom last time out. Um, but this is a really difficult test for them. Tottenham obviously flying high at the top of the table, level on points with uh, Liverpool, but above them on goal difference. Um, and in really good form, obviously the North London derby victory against Arsenal uh, last weekend was another sign of their title credentials. After this, they've got Liverpool um, and Leicester and then Wolves um, in their first game after Christmas as well. Um, so they've got plenty more tests of their title credentials coming up. But this this should be a difficult game for them considering South ha- uh, so Crystal Palace coming into it off the back of that win over West Brom. How do you see it going? Yeah, so the point you made is a really interesting one, especially going into that Liverpool game, because if they were to... You know, it works both ways. If they were to pick up a really good win and then go and you know go and beat Liverpool, or take a point off Liverpool, you know, really flying. But if they were to lose this game, that does leave them in a little bit, you know, downbeat ahead of the Liverpool game, and they could quite easily lose to Liverpool, you know, and, and Leicester as well, mm. and Wolves, two really tough games. So suddenly a really strong start could become a poor one, or a really strong start could become an excellent one, and they could be, you know, sitting high at the top of the table heading into the new year. So it's a it's a really interesting one. You know, Palace, a strange team, aren't they? Their last two wins have been four one and five one. Which is you know remarkable really, but then they've lost lost at Burnley, lost lost at home to Newcastle, which isn't great for for where they want to be this season. And obviously mm. we've mentioned it loads of times. Zaha makes such a huge difference to them, but it's just one of those games. That I just fancy Tottenham here to be honest. I mean Palace, I can see them making it difficult. You know Tottenham played Europa League, didn't they? But again, you know Mourinho had the luxury of resting. Resting, you know, a lot of his best players, some some obviously played that will play in this game, but you know, the win, the win over Arsenal was another typical Mourinho performance, wasn't it? Arsenal had loads of the ball, especially in the second half, but really good win and Tottenham racking up the wins at the moment. You know, only lost once this season, which uh, you know, it's, it's a remarkable start, really, and that was the first game of the season. So as you mentioned, mm. excellent form, and uh, yeah, yeah, I've gone Tottenham here two 0 yeah, I've also gone Tottenham. It's really hard to back against them at the moment, isn't it? Five wins from their last uh, six Premier League games. And we've mentioned those difficult games coming up, but they're in the midst of a difficult run as well. Obviously, the last three games in the Premier League, have seen them beat Man City, draw at Chelsea and then beat Arsenal. So, you know, they're, they're, they are proving themselves week after week. I think away to Liverpool will be the biggest test yet. And if they can get anything from Anfield, when you consider Liverpool's incredible home form in the league, um, people really will start having to take them seriously as title contenders. Um, obviously, as you mentioned, they've, they've first got to get over this hurdle, which is by no means straightforward. But yeah, like you, I could, I could just see Tottenham getting this one. I've gone for a 3-1 win. It's just, yeah, as I mentioned, it's, it's difficult to, back, uh, to look past them at the moment. Mourinho seems to have them full of confidence, playing well, scoring goals. Um, whether they can maintain that for the rest of the season remains to be seen, but they've got the best defensive record in the league. They're showing lots of good signs week after week um, of being able to really sustain a title challenge. So it'll be interesting to see, I think, as we mentioned, probably their bigger tests and what we'll learn more um, regarding a title challenge will come in the coming weeks in the build-up to Christmas. But yeah, this is, this is a, a big game as well for them and they can't 
afford to take their eye off the ball because obviously the Liverpool game only comes three days after that uh, this one so they can't afford to take their eye off the ball for this one because it is a dangerous game but yeah both back in Tottenham's win by two goal margins there uh, speaking of Fulham they uh, speaking of Liverpool sorry they play Fulham at Craven Cottage at 4 30 p.m on Sunday um, Liverpool we mentioned that really impressive win over Wolves last time out I don't think either of us expected them to to win that comfortably and as you mentioned earlier the same sort of applies for that Leicester game before and to, to win those two um, home games by a 7-0 ag- aggregate margin is is really impressive but the it's their, their away form which is the main worry at the moment um, in all competitions it's three draws in a row in the Premier League it's no wins in the last four away games so that's that's the area which is really keeping them off top spot at the moment um, obviously goal difference they're level on points with uh, Tottenham at the moment but you know their away form does need to improve and there's quite a stark contrast between their away form um, and their home form. Having said that, it, on paper, there doesn't look many better places to go than Craven Cottage this season. Obviously, Fulham no longer in the relegation zone, um, which they'll be delighted about, but their only home win of the season so far has come against West Brom. Away from home, they did beat um, Leicester, but last time out then lost to Man City uh, 2-0 and probably should have lost by more than that, to be honest. Um so Fulham, uh, Liverpool will be confident heading into this game. I think away from home, this is the type of game they need to to get a win on the board and start picking up those victories away from home because that could be the difference between retaining the title or not and if they improve their home form or not. Uh, sorry, away form or not because their home form has been so relentless for quite a long time now. Um, I do see them picking up a victory in this game. I think um, it, it won't be easy for them because of that away form and Fulham didn't make things too easy for Man City, even though Man City could have won by more. Um, and obviously, you know, they'll still be feeling some effects of that victory over Leicester. Um, so they'll, they'll know they can beat these sorts of teams who they go into games as underdogs against. Um, but given Liverpool's victory over Wolves last time out, the fact that they're able to rest quite a few players in midweek against Mitchell and having already secured top spot in their Champions League group, I'm just going for a Liverpool 2-1 win here. 2-1. You have gone 3-1 Liverpool in the end. I just think, you know, Fulham, I think Fulham over the last five games have been quite good. You know, they obviously they beat West Brom, beat Leicester. You mentioned they could have lost by more at City, but, you know, a lot of teams will get hit by some big numbers at City this season. And the Everton game was, you know, they missed a penalty in that game, you know, maybe should have got something out of it. The West Ham game as well, obviously missed a very late penalty, should have got something from that game. And obviously the fact that they are out, are out of the relegation zone at this stage is a Huge positive for them, you know, because it is, you know, you see so many teams down there struggling at the moment, Sheffield United. And if they can just stay, you know, hovering above, obviously they'll want to push high. Of course they will. But if they can just keep themselves ticking along, you know, pick up the odd win, they play Brighton at home after this game. And you fancy that will probably be a bigger game, you know. It worked, And Liverpool, on the other hand, it works. You know, we mentioned Tottenham. It works the other way as well, doesn't it? If Tottenham were to beat Palace, Liverpool were to drop points here and then drop points against Tottenham. Liverpool could suddenly find themselves, obviously not nowhere near out of it, but trailing a little bit and some question marks have come on. But but yeah, like you, I'm struggling really to, to, to back against them in this game. Liverpool's away form is a little bit concerning, but, you know, they'll get they'll get loads of... I mean, it's such a nice place to go and play, isn't it? Craven Cottage, you know, obviously it's, you know, old-fashioned ground. that They do let you play for them as well. I think that's the thing. Everton obviously went there and had loads and loads of the ball and I just think if you do that to Liverpool and you let them play then you're gonna you're asking for trouble because Fulham defensively I mean their injury situation is pretty good at the moment Fulham they're not they've they've got a couple of defensive injuries but apart from that you know Scott Parker can name you know a a really strong side but but yeah struggling these are not the games that are going to keep Fulham in the league and uh, yeah 3-1 Liverpool here. Yeah, looking at the table, Fulham have only West Brom have conceded more goals where Liverpool is the highest scorer so it'll be difficult to keep that Liverpool attack at bay. Um, rounding off Sunday's action is Arsenal versus Burnley, two teams in growing need of a victory. Arsenal's Premier League form is woeful at the moment, isn't it? No defeat, no wins in the last four, only one point from the uh, 12 available in that time. And obviously the defeat last time out to uh, Tottenham in the North London derby, uh, hugely disappointing. On paper, this does look like a good game for them and the type of game Mikel Arteta needs because the pressure is starting to come on it. You've talked about it for a few weeks that it should be starting to come. But Burnley, obviously only one win this season, six points from their 10 games. Arsenal will go into this one as firm favourites and and you can understand exactly why. But, you know, there's more of a question mark over Arsenal now than there has been for quite a while in terms of can they pick up victories in these games because um, their home form in particular has been so poor in recent times. Uh, Three defeats in a row in the Premier League at home against Leicester, Aston Villa and Wolves. And it's probably that Aston Villa one where they lost 3-0 at home to Aston Villa that will draw them the most concern heading into this game. Um, 
the comfort will come from the fact that Burnley, like uh, Sheffield United, we mentioned earlier, have only scored five goals all season. So it's very unlikely that you're going to go see Burnley run out comfortable victors in a game like this. Um, and certainly when you consider they have well, haven't scored any goals in the last three away games, I think it is. Um, so Arsenal will certainly be confident of not getting beaten by too much. But the fact you I'm even saying that line at home to Burnley yeah. is a sign of the, the problems they're having at the moment. Um, did return to winning ways in midweek against Dundalk in the uh, Europa League. But even that, you know, there was defensive concerns at that. They conceded twice, pretty poor goals to concede as well. Um, scored four times and goals have been a bit of an issue in the Premier League. They've only got 10 goals in their 11 games so far this season. They're struggling to create chances. Aubameyang, we've mentioned, is is hasn't really done it since signing his new contract. Um, so they've got problems at both ends of the field at the moment. But as I say, I think this does look like a, a decent game for them to get back to winning ways. And they sorely need it. Arteta needs it to take a bit of the pressure off. They need it for their confidence and more than anything, probably for their home form. Um, but yeah, I've gone for a 2-0 Arsenal win in this one. 2-0, yeah. I've just gone 1-0 Arsenal in the end. I do expect them to win, but I think it'll be really tight. I mean, you mentioned their poor run of form, but they, they should have lost at Leeds as well, shouldn't they, Arsenal? You know, I think Leeds mm. hit the woodwork at least twice in that game, had loads of the balls. And so you could look in at four straight defeats for Arsenal. You could have been, obviously, it's three out of four, which is it's, it's just nowhere near good enough. And I think, you know, there's speculation that maybe Arteta's got three games, you know, left to save his job, maybe three Premier League games, the next three, Burnley at home. Southampton at home, Everton away. And then they go, then they host Chelsea, and they they are really tough games, aren't they? Especially the, the the Southampton one at home. You feel like it's a real like banana skin for. I mean, probably unfair to say that. It wouldn't be a surprise if Southampton won that game, but mm. they're really tough games, you know. After this one, and that's why this one is just so important. You know, you look at Burnley this season, and like you mentioned, their lack of goals is a real issue, and it's a little bit surprising, maybe considering the players that they have got available in the final third. You know, Chris Wood has been. You know, a pretty consistent goal scorer for them. You know, Rodriguez, Barnes, they've got quality going forward. But, you know, they are one of the sides that we've obviously picked out that we fear for this season that might go down. And, and uh, yeah, it's, it's a nice game for Arsenal. Obviously, Arteta, yeah, I said it I said it even before, you know, it was really spoken about. I do think, you know, there's a lot of talk about, uh, have they really improved this season? Are they that different, you know, under Emery? And, you know, look at post-Wenger. It's never really, not really going anywhere at the moment, Arsenal. Well, they're, they're going somewhere. They're going down the table at the moment. Obviously, there's Joker there. They're, they're going to stay in the league. I mean, obviously, I mean, poor last season, poor finish to the season, not a good position in the table. You know, Europa League, obviously, is a little bit of saving grace. You know, they're, they're obviously through in that competition. But the Premier League form, let's say, is so poor. But, um, so, uh, I, you know, you, I just can't back Burnley to get anything here. When we mentioned it, they've been disappointed this season. As disappointed of Arsenal have been as well. But, yeah, I've just gone 1-0 Arsenal in the end. I think with Arteta, certainly in the early days, they did look, you mentioned identity earlier, they did look to be like an identity coming under his play at Arsenal, but you need to uh, parry that with results, really, and that's not happening at the moment. The results are so poor for them. Uh, rounding off the game week's action, also on Sunday night, is Leicester versus Brighton. Um, Leicester, fly, one of those teams flying high at the top of the table. They're fourth at the moment, um, having returned to winning ways against Sheffield United last time out. Brighton, um, they're 16th in the table, only four points above the relegation zone. Um, five defeats from their 11 games so far. Uh, two wins. They lost, obviously, at home to Southampton last time out. But before that, had drawn with Liverpool, um, had beaten Aston Villa. They're one of the teams we've mentioned it a few times. Who Their league position is probably a bit harsh on them. Um, and they're capable of getting points out of, on most games. But this is a difficult one for them. Leicester, obviously, they had that blip against Fulham, uh, where they were really disappointing to lose that one at home. Um, but then the bounce back against Sheffield United was important. That was another game they were expected to win. And they'll be expected to win this game. And when you consider their um, festive fixture list coming up against Everton, uh, Tottenham, Manchester United uh, in three games either side of Christmas, that's a really difficult uh, fixture list. And if they get to stay in and around the top four, which will be their target now this season, having seen all the big, uh, most of the big teams drop points relatively regularly and having some come so close to the Champions League qualifying for the Champions League last season that top four will certainly be their target they're, they're looking higher than t- just top six in Europa League now this season um, if they are to stay in and around that top four they're going to need some good points over uh, Christmas against those three teams but in particular in these sorts of games where they're expected to win against Brighton um, and as, as I've mentioned a few times I, I am a fan of Brighton and the way they play this season I think they've got the the players to really cause most teams problems and get goals against most teams and get points against most teams. Um, but I don't really expect them to get anything out of this game. I could see it being a close one, but I've gone for a Leicester 2-1 win here. 
Yeah, gone two one exactly the same. Leicester, you do fancy it's going to be a tight one. I, I completely agree with Brighton, and you fancy if they were to go down, you, you know, Graham Potter, you'd fancy he would be on the list of a lot of Premier League clubs looking at a manager that could come in and you know really take the club in you know a new direction. Maybe if he, whether he gets that chance, whether Brighton go down, obviously they're, they're looking like they will stay up. You know, I think they've got some good players, but. I mean, Leicester, we speak about Leicester, don't we, like top four? I mean, they secured first position in the Europa League group on Thursday by beating Athens. And mm. it's, you, you've got to remember where they come from, really, isn't it? They sort of, obviously, they won the league and been a Champions League side now. And uh, it's just fantastic, really, you know, to go through to the next round of Europa League, top in the group. You know, they finished ahead of Sporting Braga, who are obviously a really good side, you know. And obviously, this Premier League form this season, to beat Sheffield United was a big one um, last time out because they had a little bit of a blip didn't they obviously lost at home to Fulham which was you know a really disappointing result for what they're trying to achieve this season but yeah so you know I do I do like Leicester they've got some players back but you know lost a couple again so they choose out I think Ricardo's out again in this game but you know they've got some, they're getting players back they're getting numbers back around the festive period and they're good enough as they've shown this season to to give absolutely anyone the game the City game obviously stands out for me when they were Manchester City when they really you know caused them a lot of problems and won that game Brighton I do think they'll cause a lot of problems this season, pick up a lot of points. And uh, I do think they'll stay up this season, Brighton. I think they're I think they're a really good side, got some good players in attack. But yeah, same as you really for probably for the same reasons. I've gone I've gone Leicester two one. Both going two one in that one. All right, thanks Matt. Um we will be back on Tuesday. There's a quick turnaround in Premier League games, obviously the festive period that usually happens. So we'll be back on Tuesday for the next round of predictions. Um, in the meantime, you can find previews for all these and many more games over on sportsmall.co.uk. You can also subscribe to this podcast and all the usual channels. Um, and on YouTube, you can follow us to make sure you don't miss a video or an episode of this podcast. Thanks for joining and we hope to see you again soon.